Welcome to the Big Four Accounting Firms podcast, brought to you by BigFourAccountingFirms.com. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about an interesting article that came out from Daily Mail about KPMG, and the title is The Shaming of an Audit Giant, Untruthful Big Four Accounting Firm. KPMG sinks even deeper into disgrace over silent night collapse. And it's written up, I mean, you know how the Daily Mail is, it's like a tabloid and they have pictures that are that are tabloid like for KPMG and it says their sins over the years it has silent night where they're fined 13 million dollars which is almost a record fine uh, issued by the FRC um, a fine in 2018 over Quindell uh, Ted Baker in 2020 the profits were overstated which I'm guessing is a KPMG client of uh, KPMG was fined in 2019 over the cooperative bank 2016 with FIFA and they paid oh, they quit after failing to notice bosses secretly paid themselves and I mean it speaks later on about Carillion but it's not in the infograph and the infograph really isn't the best because it doesn't really have the particulars but I'm sure it's just because it's an infographic but it's very interesting and it says that KPMG lied in its defense failed to disclose more than 1800 documents to investigators was untruthful in claiming that David Costley Wood, who was uh, the restructuring partner, had not had not used his private email for work purposes. Uh, so they they claimed that he didn't, but he actually did. Uh, KPMG engaged in conflicts of interest in working for both Silent Night and HIG, which, I, I mean, it was a private equity deal, and, and they had a conflict of interest, and they didn't disclose it. They failed to tell regulators that had been working for Silent Night before it was formally taken on. And they put money of 1200 saver in Saturday night's pension scheme at risk. The Financial Reporting Council in the UK said that the KPMG was advancing a defense which a respondent knows is untruthful, seriously risks undermining the regulatory system, and compounds the original failings. And so they're trying to publicly shame KPMG. And another interesting thing in there too was that there's an industry source i'm not sure who it was but they just said just another sign of the culture at kpmg i mean i don't know that sounds kind of like this podcast but maybe that's probably maybe where they got it from but kpmg i think this does speak to the culture of kpmg and it's not just in the uk we also had a similar thing in the us where where they they tried to give the partners a heads up people that had worked at the pcob and that they were going to be audited by pcob and now they were concealing the information. And even though this is really bad, I think this KPMG does have a bad environment. And I think this does highlight that. But I think another thing too is, is I, don't, I don't know if this is too uncommon. Because if you're getting audited, and I mean, if you're getting, if you know you're about to get destroyed, I mean, you're not going to disclose everything. But this guy, what this partner did at KPMG was not, was even worse. And I mean, but to think that they're not going to find that out, you have to be really lucky, especially with KPMG and everything that's happened to them in Europe. I don't know why they did this. And it's just like a huge reputation hit. All these scandals that they have. And then this article too, you just don't want all this stuff coming up when people Google your brand and, you know, people reading the news, you don't want all these things coming up. And similar to what we spoke about earlier in the week about the structure of the big four accounting firms. I think this just speaks more and more to the structure and the danger that it poses. Cause you have KPMG has a lot of issues around the world, but you have the UK and the U S really damaging KPMG's brand and it's a network of partnerships. And I think that's what enables this type of behavior is you have these partners in these regions that aren't really holding each other accountable and they're autonomous from each other they have one brand which is kpmg but they they use it for their own profit like people in in their region are just worried about maximizing their profit they're not worried about maintaining the brand and there's a chairman at the top of kpmg who's supposed to be worried about that but it obviously has not it obviously has not changed anything that's happened at kpmg even after there was errors found they still didn't cooperate with regulators to me that's even that, that's even that's even worse and I think something needs to happen as far as uh, how they hire people, um, but also they need to have them take some kind of ethical 
exam at the partner level. Something's something's wrong. Or the way that they run their business, there might be something wrong with KPMG, the way they run their business, the way they run their incentives, uh, the way they communicate with each other. And also, I think it's something at the top as well. The the people at the top are not the best because if if they were, if the people at the top of KPMG and these locations were ethical and striving to have a strong brand, they wouldn't allow this. They wouldn't allow these type of partners to progress. But what happens is you have somebody that's, that's not good at the top in your region who's in charge of your office. And then they're fine having people that are not that good as the head of audit, as the head of tax, as the head of the consulting. And then those people, since they're not that ethical because the t- person at the top is not ethical, then they're fine having unethical people below them. So it's a systemic rot that you have to get out. And I mean, KPMG is, I think, the the most likely to end up the same way that Arthur Anderson did, the way that they're... I mean, just the way that their firm is run. I mean, they had that tax issue many years ago in the U.S. that almost, they could have completely bankrupted them and destroyed their brand. Um, So, and and then they've had these two recent, I mean, they've had many recent ethical issues and it it seems like it's nonchalant. They don't care about it. So I think KPMG, uh, I don't. I don't know. There's something wrong there where they need to. They need to watch out for their brand because a lot is at risk here. And I'm not sure what can be done because I don't know if they would break them up at this point because it would just make the other big four accounting firms even stronger. And I'm not sure that that's what regulators want to happen either. They want smaller accounting firms to do better. But it's kind of harder to have the smaller mid-tier accounting firms audit the largest companies in the world just because of the the size and scope and number of employees necessary to to audit and consult the largest companies in the world. So it's a catch-22. But I think KPMG is, is, I think they're taunting regulators with the way that they behave and the way that their partners respond to these allegations and don't address the systemic problems. And it's just something that they're going to have to do. And if the brand doesn't improve, then the partners need to get together and find a replacement for the global chairman to fix it. I mean, that's the other thing, too, is is if the, the global chairman is not getting it done, then they need to replace him. So, I mean, that, that's another option, too. But that's just the update I wanted to go over today. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast to get future updates. And check out the show notes for some helpful links. Thanks for listening.